Well, hello and welcome to day 168 of our daily Bible reading. As always, let's begin with a word of prayer. Transform us, God, by your word. Whatever message these scriptures reveal to us today, may we hear and respond with grace and love. Amen. And today we begin in the book of 1 Kings and we read chapter 18, Elijah's message to Ahab. After many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year of the drought, saying, Go present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. The famine was severe in Samaria. Ahab summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of the palace. Now Obadiah revered the Lord greatly. When Jezebel was killing off all the, pro the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets, hid them fifty to a cave, and provided them with bread and water. Then Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs of water and to all the wadis. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive and not lose some of the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went in one direction by himself, and Obadiah went in another direction by himself. As Obadiah was on the way, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him, fell on his face, and said, Is it you, my lord Elijah? He answered him, It is I. Go, tell your lord that Elijah is here. And he said, How have I sinned that you would hand your servant over to Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom to which my Lord has not sent to seek you. And when they would say, He is not here, he would require an oath of the kingdom or nation that they had not found you. But now you say, go, tell your Lord that Elijah is here. As soon as I have gone from you, the Spirit of the Lord will carry you, I know not where. So when I come and tell Ahab and he cannot find you, he will kill me, although I, your servant, have revered the Lord from my youth. Has it not been told, my Lord? What I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets, fifty to a cave, and provided them with bread and water. Yet now you say, Go, tell your Lord that Elijah is here. He will surely kill me. Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went, to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Now therefore have all Israel assemble for me at Mount Carmel with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the Israelites and assembled the prophets at Mount Carmel. Elijah then came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets number 450. Let two bulls be given to us. Let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but... Put no fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire is indeed God. All the people answered, Well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourselves one bull and prepare it first, for you are many. Then call on the name of your God, but put no fire to it. 
So they took the bull that was given them, prepared it, and called on the name of, of Baal from morning until noon, crying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no answer. They limped about the altar that they had made. At noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud. Surely he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he has wandered away, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. Then they cried aloud, and, as was their custom, they cut themselves with swords and lances until the blood gushed out over them. As midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation, but there was no voice no answer, and no response. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come closer to me, and all the people came closer to him. First he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to contain two measures of seed. Next he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood. He said, Fill four jars with water, and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Again, he said, do it a third time, and they did it a third time, so that the water ran all around the altar and filled the trench also with water. At the time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord indeed is God. The Lord indeed is God. Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. Then they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the Wadi Kishon and killed them there. The drought ends. Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat, and drink, for there is a sound of rushing rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. There he bowed himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. He said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. He went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Then he said, Go again seven times. At the seventh time he said, Look, a little cloud no bigger than a person's hand is rising out of the sea. Then he said, Go say to Ahab, Harness your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. In a little while the heavens grew black with clouds and wind. There was a heavy rain. Ahab rode off and went to Jezreel. But the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. He girded up his loins and ran in front of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Acts 11, Peter's Report to the Church at Jerusalem. Now the apostles and the brothers and sisters who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So Peter went up to Jerusalem. The circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. 
As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment three men, sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them, and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The Church in Antioch Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world, and this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that, according to their ability, each would send relief to the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Psalm 135 Praise for God's goodness and might. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for he is gracious. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great. Our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does, in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all deeps. He it is who makes the clouds rise at the end of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. He it was who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, both humans and animals. He sent signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants. He struck down many nations and killed mighty kings, Sion, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, 
and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to his people Israel. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. A nose, but there is no breath in their mouths. Those who make them and all who trust them shall become like them. O house of Israel, bless the Lord. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. O house of Levi, bless the Lord. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, he who resides in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 17, verses 12 through 13. Better to meet a she-bear robbed of its cubs than to confront a fool immersed in folly. Evil will not depart from the house of one who returns evil for good. Well, this has been the Word of God and the Word of Life. Thanks be to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.